What's up guys, Adam and Whisker Fisherman TV and this week we're going to do my gray man bag. Before we jump into it, I wanted to give somebody a shout out. That's Corsair Trainers. Um, he's a subscriber of mine. He's very engaged in my comments. You know, I've had a chance to kind of message back and forth with him a little bit. I've watched some of his videos. He's really good at putting out a lot of content, guys, and he's actually giving me a tip or two. So, I'm going to go ahead. If you're watching this channel, I'd check his out. He does put out some pretty good stuff, and he puts it out pretty quickly, too. Which is something that I just look for in YouTube channels, you know, in general. So, with that, i go ahead and jump into this. I'm going to start by saying... You know, the gray man bags, you know, in my opinion, it's kind of a gray area. Some people, it's a full-on bug-out bag. It's, I think tend to be more people that live in the cities, which is something that I, I don't have to deal with. For my purposes, this is basically an expansion of my get-home bag, which I'll, I'll put an info card up there if you want to check that video out. When I have this, you know, you've always got your EDC. But generally, the only time that I'm around the city would be our nation's capital. And that's because the fishing down there is actually pretty good. I've also got my fishing bag. You know, that's got my fishing gear. So my EDC goes in there. I've got everything I need for an overnight trip most of the time if I'm going down there. So I can always raid that for some key items if I need to. Depending on the situation, I might take that before I take this or take items out of this and put into that bag. That's just always an option I like to keep open. I don't necessarily believe that every bag needs to be for a specific designated purpose. And again, on this particular bag, guys, one of the big reasons I think that people pack a gray man bag. Okay, well, what's a gray man bag? It, it's something that's not made to look like a bug out bag. Um, you see a lot of people with computer bags. Um, that's something I, I would shy away from, that's my opinion. My logic behind that is if you have a $300 computer bag and you're worried about people, you know, robbing people in the street, quite frankly, is the reason we pack these bags a lot of times. They're going to see that. They see a $300 computer bag. They're probably going to assume you got a $2,000 computer. And you could say, well, you can't eat you know, the computer. But uh, people who are out you know, just robbing people in the streets, looting, whatever, aren't necessarily the most forward thinking. So that's just something to think about. I really do prefer just a simple duffel bag. The more normal it looks, the better. My rationale behind that is that when I'm carrying this down the street, I want it to look like I just came from the gym. It's got my dirty laundry in it. You know, that that's what I want it to look like. We'll start with the outside pocket. Got a $1 headlamp. I like those things a lot. Again, part of this bag, you're not going to see any really high dollar items in here. Again, part of my logic for that is if somebody does roll me, somebody gets my stuff, they ain't getting much. <laughs> Might not be the best way to look at it, but that's my opinion. Caffeine inhaler. Carry one of these in my bug out bag too. It's just a really efficient way to carry caffeine on you that you can kind of control the dose. Something you can't really do with the... Uh, pills so much or even the drinks and you can find those on Amazon right up top got a decent little flashlight it's nothing uh, nothing too special the reason I like this one is it's got that kind of snake head on it which is good for you know looking in tight spaces it's also got a magnet you know one of the things that could happen, could happen. You know, you drop your keys down the gutter, something like that. I, I like having a little extendable magnet for this bag. 
in right up top. Got a full MRE. Again, these are great. Throw in a pack. Don't have to worry about it. There's a lot of good items in there. Primarily, though, it, you know, it's it's calories. Which, again, in a city environment, it's not going to be a whole lot of trapping that you can do unless you're going after rats or cats. Um, hopefully, you're out before things get that bad, though. But food that's ready to eat, guys, and when I mean ready to eat, I don't mean dehydrated food. I mean something you can open up right now and eat it. Good pair of gloves. Again, I bought these, I think, at a Walmart. I bought two pairs of them. I've been wearing both pairs. It's been a year now. They're still holding up really well. Got no complaint there. Coffee can. I threw stuff in here. I, I do like these coffee cans. I, I genuinely do save them. It's just a lot of little things. You know, it's a miniature bucket with a lid on it. So that's something to think about if you're a coffee drinker. It's in this bag. It's an extra container if I need it. But it's just a little bit of waterproofing. Got some water treatment. These are a little different than the tablets. It's actually a liquid. Came across those again watching some through hikers and, and their loadout videos. They really seem to like them. They seem to think they're easier to use than the tablets. And again, with the straws, something you do have to worry about and keep in mind is that they can freeze. Your life straws, it's just something to think about. Good size hank paracord. 50, 60 feet. Again, that's just a staple of these bags. You're going to want cordage almost no matter what situation you're in. Glow stick. Which I think for in the city, honestly, that's probably a little better than a candle. You can't really count on making a fire and you don't want to burn through your batteries. So, a couple of glow sticks, always a good idea. These are two of my, what I call pocket MREs is the title of that video. These are basically an eight hour ration. And I have got all kinds of things on these guys. I will put an info card up. There's calories in here. There's coffee in here. There's duct tape in here. There's whiskey in here. There's toilet paper in here. There's matches in here. There's tinder in here. There's headache pills. There's stomach pills. There's just a lot of really good stuff in those little packs. So, again, in this situation, I don't think you're going to really be able to forage for food in the way that you would out in the wilderness. Kind of the same thing. This one has a lot more medical stuff in here. There's trauma pads and band-aids and ointments and stuff like that. But there's also a lot of the stuff that's in these. It's basically just one of these that... I ate the food out of and I, I decided to replace it with some medical items. Cheap as hell poncho. <laughs> I throw these in all my packs, guys. I, I think in a city, honestly, that's probably going to work a lot better. Um, just because you're not going to have to worry about the brush. I'm not telling you not to put a good piece of rain gear in here, but that is something to think about. Mylar blanket. Again, I don't know how you're going to put one of these bags together without at least one Mylar blanket. Some more of the 700 pound strapping guys. It comes with a couple of needles, a little wax, piece of paper. It's got some, some ideas on there. Um, it's not an, an instruction manual, but it, it, I like it. Keep it in there. Keeps you thinking. This is my little fire kit. Not a lot in here, guys. Back strike anywhere matches. Waterproof would be better. A lighter would be better yet. But for this particular bag, I, I think I'll be okay. My rationale, again, well, what are you going to burn? 
you know, if you're stuck in the city overnight, trash. You know, that's basically your option from what I've seen. Huh. Unless you're going to go raid a lumber yard or something. So I, I try and keep this to where I'm not relying on fire as much as possible. Nice big healthy chunk of dryer lint. And this is a half a dozen of those little paper towel and wax matches I make. I'm going to do a video on those guys. Those really are my favorite, uh, my favorite, my favorite tinder. There's other options out there, but... That is a really good one that I don't see a lot of. Uh, some backup batteries. I don't have anything in here that really runs on triple A's. This is for my EDC light. Which again is actually in my fishing bag right now. But you should always have backup batteries. Honestly, even if you don't have a light that runs on them, usually I throw a couple double A's in these bags as well. And again, my rationale behind that is it's just such a common battery. Maybe I can walk into the store and buy the flashlight, and I don't have to spend money on the batteries. This is a car emergency tool. Um, this came right out of a shit hit the fan box. Not super high quality or anything. I could care less about this glass breaker I could care less about this strap cutter what I like is that it's a dynamo flashlight and you just got your little hand crank there that is the only reason that this is in this bag Vaseline again I got this tip from Corsair trainers when I did my gas mask bag video which again I'll try and throw an info card up here. But this will help you gain a seal on a gas mask, which is important um, without necessarily having to shave all the scruff off your face. Just a little fishing kit, guys. I did a video on this. Uh, this is one of my first videos. I don't think anyone watched it. I'll put an info card up there. Good hank of paracord in there, or a good length of paracord. I think it's about a third of a roll, a 10 or 20 pound line. I've got a yo yo, compass, glow sticks, just a lot of little goodies stuffed in there. I really do think, again, that's a lot more effective than those little pocket fishing kits that show up in these videos all the time. water again being in a city environment guys if you have cash with you you can probably go buy these um, but clean drinking water because again it's not necessarily going to be ready access to streams and, and rivers um, the way that you're going to find out in the woods at least in the woods I'm typically in. So this was something that I placed in here because I wanted clean water. Again, I've got my canteen and cup if I do need to boil water or I need to purify water, but the city environment, I just don't see that as realistic. Just the, you know, insulated little water bottle, guys. Uh, I picked this up for a dollar uh, quite a while ago. Again, guys, in the prepping community and especially the bushcraft community, we got really into single wall containers because you can't boil water in them. That's very true. If you can find one for a dollar, buy it. I couldn't. So, I, again, I bought this with the intention of it does give me the ability to use my water purification tablets. Nothing really special about it. If I come across the water fountain... You know, I can refill that as many times as I want to. These, I'm not saying you can't refill them, but you're going to find that they're going to leak a little bit in your bag, which is something you do not want. Heavy meal trash bag. This is another one of those pieces of kit, guys, that 
when you're out there, can be worth its weight in gold. This is a lot of different things. More than I can sit here and list. And, you know, I carry one of these pretty much every time I'm out, guys, and I really do use them quite a bit. And one of the main reasons for that, it's just so inexpensive. <laughs> I don't mind you know, using it all night and then throwing my trash in it to carry it out and then throwing the bag away, which is something I'm not going to do with a tarp. Getting in a little bit more of the fun stuff now, I guess. Got a gas mask and a filter. I think this is the M65. I don't actually remember the uh, actual name of it right this second. Now again guys, I said this in my gas mask video, a modern gas mask is what you want. A modern gas mask, which this is not, but these are really inexpensive. Again, these run about 15 bucks. I think they're a lot better than a dust mask. I think they are infinitely better than a bandana. You know, my opinion on that, bandana is great to keep the sweat off of you guys, but so is a piece of t-shirt. Um, and I, I would never want to rely on one for something like, a, you know, a 9-11 situation. Haven't activated the filter yet. This probably should be vacuum sealed, but, you know, I, I busted it open when I first got it. This is probably, I think this was the first gas mask I ever got. My intention with these, once I get a modern one, I, I want to keep them as wall hangers. And that goes with the Vaseline, guys. This one, I will say, over the, the model that I have in my gas mask bag has the cheek filters. These are a little rougher to get in. This one's a little quicker. And the reason that this is in this bag and not in my gas mask bag is I consider this one step up. This is something I throw in here when I think there's a chance something might really go down. I throw my gas mask bag in my car every time I, I head to a city pretty much. It's the belt knife. Well, this one comes with a pocket knife. Nothing particularly great about this knife, guys. It, it seems pretty solid. I carry a good belt knife from my EDC. I've got backup knives in my fishing bags. I've got backup knives in my get home bag. Again, you know, anytime you build one of these bags, guys, in almost any situation, a knife is just too valuable of a tool not to have. This one, again, this is something I got out of a shit hit the fan box. It is not great quality, but it doesn't really need to be. It's something to get me to where I need to go. Once it gets me to where I, I need to go, I'll throw it in the trash. I, <laughs> I don't have any, uh, any attachment to that particular knife. Now we're getting into tools again, guys. I, I say this in a lot of my videos. Multi-tools are a great little EDC item. But the thing with that is if multi-tool isn't doing the job in an everyday situation, well, that's not that big of a deal. You go get a full-size tool. In these situations, you don't have that luxury. Any time that I have a gas mask, okay, that means that it's time to famoose. It's time to get the hell out of where you're at. Good nail puller. It's pretty self-explanatory, guys. I should probably open a door, whatever I got to do. I need to crack a window open. A little bit of <laughs> self-defense capability there, too. But that's not why it's in this bag. That is, okay, I need to pry a door open. Something's in my way. It needs to get out of my way. So that's why that's in there. 
10 snips. You can cut through a fence with these guys. Again, it's not something that I would recommend doing. Just to kind of do it. If, <laughs> Because it is going to eat your tin snips up really quickly, but in this situation, it doesn't matter. I just it needs to get me through that fence right now today. Hacksaw, pretty much the same idea. Good full size tools, guys. Something that you can really get stuff out of your way. That, that's the point I really try and make with this. I, I'm not trying to down multi-tools. I, I talk about them a lot. I really do think they're a great EDC item. But especially in these situations, and especially I think if you're in the city even more so than if you can hit a trail or something, full-size full tools are going to matter a lot. You don't know what you're going to come across. You don't know where you're going to get stuck. You know, if you, I don't know, maybe you're stuck in a basement, maybe you're stuck on the top floor of a building, whatever your situation. You can try and take your belt knife and pry that door open. It's probably going to break your knife. You might get through the door. But by throwing this in there, which isn't that heavy for what you're getting out of it, it it's really not. And you're going to get through that door. You know, I have an M16 bayonet in my bug out bag that's specifically in there because it has a wire cutter. I can get through a fence here and there, one or two strands, enough for me to slide through. But I'm going to be able to do it a lot faster with this and I'm going to be able to do a lot more with this. Just a simple pair of tin snips. Again, guys, not that heavy. This doesn't weigh that much more than a multi-tool does. This actually weighs less than a multi-tool. This is only a little bit heavier, and I don't, you know, a hacksaw weighs three or four pounds. And if you get out into the woods, okay, this will manipulate wood, this will manipulate wood, and this will manipulate wood. Wood tools will not manipulate metal. I'm not saying that this is, you know, something you're going to want to go crafting with at your home. But in situations where you, it doesn't matter what it looks like, how clean it is, whatever, this can save your life. A buck saw probably ain't going to do that. That's my opinion. Um, again, guys, this bag for me is going to be a lot different, I think, than if you are somebody who actually lives in a city and you got to have a bag, you know. To be quite frank with you, my best defense that I have and the rule of thumb that I go with, if I think there's going to be something going on, guys, I'm not going to go. I'm going to keep my, my ass at home. And then I can bunker in and defend my home if I need to. If I have to, I can bug out, but I've got all the gear here that I need to do that. You gotta be aware of what you're getting yourself into. That's a big part of it. That's gonna be the end of this video, guys. Thanks again for watching.